Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas. Today we're making two sweet DIYs, but first I wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who subscribed to my channel and shared my videos. We finally reached 200 subscribers and I am just so excited with the growth that I'm seeing on my channel. So stay tuned to see how you enter into the giveaway later in this video. So first we're making this little shabby chic pillow. Um, I just took two pieces of fabric and cut them into squares and then put them on top of each other and folded them in half to make a heart, or I'm cutting them out to make the heart shape. I found this fabric at Walmart, I believe it was like $1.97 per yard or something like that, so very affordable. So depending on the size that you want your heart to be, you're going to need to cut it out bigger than what you want because of how we're going to cut the edges and tie them. It makes the heart skinnier, I guess, than it would be. My boyfriend is making spaghetti again. <laughs> Do you guys notice? I feel like guys love spaghetti more than girls. I don't know. So when I cut mine, I probably should have made the two um, like curves at the top a little bit bigger because my heart turned out pretty skinny, <laughs> which I'm not too worried about it. It kind of makes it look a little more shabby chic. Um, but if I had thought about it before, I probably would have done it a little bit bigger. So now I'm just using a pair of sharp scissors to cut along the edge and then I started tying these together but when I started to tie them I realized they were a little too short it was really hard to tie two knots so I went back around with my scissors and made the lines a little bit deeper into the heart which is what made it more skinny um, but I had to do that to be able to tie them so that's why I would suggest I'm making it a little bit bigger than you actually want it to be. So I just tied these all the way around and then I just left a little hole near the top so I could put in the stuffing. So like I said earlier, I'm so excited we have reached 200 subscribers already. Um, I thank you guys so much for your support. Um, so we are going to do that giveaway that I promised you. So to enter the giveaway, I just want you to comment down below giveaway and then let me know what was your favorite craft that I've done so far on this channel. Entry to the giveaway is going to be open for one week so I will announce the winner of the giveaway next Tuesday. So as you can see here, I'm taking an old pillow that we had on hand that we did not use anymore. You can get a new one too from Walmart for probably a dollar too. Um, but I just cut the side off of that and I'm pulling out the batting from the inside and it was really smashed down and old. So I'm just trying to fluff it up a little bit and that's why I'm like ripping it all apart. And I just stuffed it in that little hole that I left open there on the side. Next, I'm just tying up those last few pieces and then we are ready to decorate it. If you've not yet subscribed to this channel, I would love it if you take the time to do that now. We do lots of uh, DIYs on this channel. We do a lot of shabby chic and farmhouse decor. And oftentimes I have the kids helping me too and they are super cute and you wouldn't want to miss that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but it was probably a while back, but I do do custom orders. Um, so if you guys want to check out my Facebook page, I'll have that link down below and follow me on Instagram as well. Um, I do custom orders and then oftentimes I'll have crafts that I've already made up for sale too. <laughs> That's my little baby girl. She's always hanging out talking in the background. Aren't you baby girl? <laughs> So here I'm just taking some old fabric that I had on hand. I really love this one. I think it looks really shabby chic with the music notes on it. Um, I got this at a small store in a little town that I lived in a long time ago in Colorado. Um, so I'm not sure where you could get this, but I'm sure they have similar things at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's for sure. And then I'm cutting it along just to get the shape that I want and then I'm using my fingers to kind of fray the edges a little bit more. And then what I'm putting on it here is just some ink for stamps and I got this at Hobby Lobby a long time ago. It was lasting me forever and I'm just using that to kind of darken up the fabric and make it look a little more old and distressed. 
So I'm just adding in some fabrics and lace. I have some little flowers from Hobby Lobby. All this stuff you can get um, from a fabric store, even Walmart, even your Dollar Tree might have some of it. And then I have these little tags I got from Hobby Lobby too in a big pack and even a little small skeleton key. And then I'm just writing the word love with my stamps onto the tag before I glue it onto the pillow. And I'm using hot glue for everything because this pillow is just decorative and I'm not too worried about it falling apart. Um, usually, <laughs> hey baby girl, usually hot glue works really well um, for fabric as long as you're not going to be um, too hard on it. You guys are always going to see my family walking around. I have, my, I love to have my family around me and these videos take a lot of time to make. So I hate to be away from them for that long. Um, they're just my best friends and we just really enjoy spending time together. So you're always going to see them walking by and I'd love to have the kids help me too. So in this next DIY, you'll see Koi helping me with the little photo transfer. This is something I really love about the shabby chic style is that there's really no rhyme or reason to anything. I mean, you can just throw whatever you want on there until it looks good. <laughs> That's usually what I do. I don't, I don't usually have like a plan in mind like I do for some of my other crafts. So it's really fun. You get to use your creative side, just get crazy with it. And <laughs> Usually I love the outcome, so it's a lot of fun to do these kind of crafts. I did used to get a lot of fabric flowers and burlap flowers and things like that from Hobby Lobby, but I'm really wanting to try and make my own, so if you guys want to see that in a future video, let me know down in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. I really love how this little pillow turned out. I think it's just so cute um, and just really fun to add to a little... <laughs> you like it too? So for this next DIY, I have Koi helping me and we are doing this wood photo transfer. Hello folks. <laughs> So here we have a copy of a picture of Koi fishing when he was little that we printed in black and white. And then we're using Mod Podge um, and painting that onto the little wood board we got from Hobby Lobby. It was just $1.99 so this is a really affordable craft. I think we printed this picture at Office Depot for like 40 cents. So if you don't have a printer, that's an option too. And then we're just trying to smooth out the Mod Podge as much as we can before we put that board on top of it. So our little wood board, we're just trying to center that as perfectly as we can so we can get that picture of Koi um, into the frame. Next, we're using a card that we didn't need anymore just to flatten it out. Um, and make sure there are no air bubbles or any real thick spots of glue. Yeah. And um, you can use a scraper or something if you have one, but this is what we had, so this is what we used, and it worked just fine. So you're gonna wanna let this dry overnight so you get a really, really good, strong hold, and it's very, very dry. <laughs> Koi wanted to make sure everyone subscribed, so he ran to his room and I was like, what are you doing? And he came back with this written on his notebook that he could hold up for you guys. <laughs> so please subscribe to our channel if you like seeing these DIYs. So after it had dried completely overnight, we are taking a washcloth and we get it pretty damp and we just set it on top and push it down and we let that sit for around 10 to 15 minutes and then we're uh, carefully pulling off the paper. So you just want to carefully pull off any excess bits of paper with your hands and then you can take that washcloth and start rubbing away the excess um, paper. You want to make sure it's soaked all the way through um, and then you're gonna go ahead and rub very very lightly. This is a very delicate process. It's so so easy to push too hard and take off the picture so you want to be really really careful. Don't worry, that big white spot is not where the paper or the picture didn't adhere. It's actually his little white cooler. <laughs> um, but if you, at first glance, it might look like it didn't 
work there, but it did. So it takes a lot of patience. Um, once you let it dry, you're probably going to see more white spots. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and go back over that several times if you need to until you get the perfect look that you're going for. I just love how it turned out. It definitely took a lot of practice. I've done a few before that didn't turn out so well. So if you don't um, get it perfect on your first try, don't give up. You can do it. Um, I love how this one turned out and I'm sure you can do it too. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends and family if you think they'd like it too. Also, don't forget to enter into that giveaway. See you next time. Bye.